going? I just bought the best Toyota ever made. But it's 38 years old and it does need some love. So we gotta do some work on it, but first, let's go for a ride. Hey, let's go for a little putt. I'll point out some things. First is, we'll have to give a description of what the car is. It's a 1984 Toyota Celica GTS. I believe they made, I don't know if there's anything below the GT. Is a GT, GTS, and a Supra. GT's kind of, in my mind, is more of a, a plain Jane body style. The GTS is the Supra without the straight six engine. It's running the 20R or 20RE, depending on what year it is. One's carbureted, one's fuel injected. It's running a five speed. This being the GTS, it also has a moonroof, the flip up headlights, fender flares, mag wheels, uh, rear spoiler. I'm sure there's a bunch of other stuff that I'm missing too. But things that don't work, that I already know of. Gas gauge, yeah, you gotta guess on that. It's got remote control mirrors, but they don't work. So they got a piece of paper wedged in them. <laughs> Try to get them to go. On a straightaway, I'll show you in a second. And you'll see that the steering wheel, yeah, she's not straight. I don't know if you have to pull the wheel off or you can pull the wheel off and just change its location and be straight again. Not sure on that. The exhaust is a little droney and it does rattle. It's okay if you're putting around town and want to be a little sporty, but after a while, like, if you drive a car for a couple of hours, it just vibrates your brain. <laughs> I know, I'm getting old. But anyway, so I, I like to try to quiet that up a little bit, see if we can maybe change out the muffler, see what's going on, if there's any leaks in it. The car is a original paint. I don't believe it is from New England because everything in New England is rusted to death. Nice view, huh? This is, uh, I forget what they said. It, it might be like a California car or, or down south. It's definitely by looking around it, you will notice that it's not our typical New England Toyota that's rusted to the door handles with the frame falling out of it. Same drivetrain essentially as a 84 Corolla and is were pretty much the number one reliable car for that time frame. So that's why I feel this is actually even better than the Toyota Corolla because it looks much better than the Toyota Corolla. <laughs> it's got the sporty look to it. It's got some style. Let's go pull up here and we'll do a quick walk around and we'll take a look at the outside of it. That looks like a quiet place to go do our bidding. Go in there. I pulled over in an area that's a little on the quieter side, hopefully. And we'll just do a quick walk around the outside of it. It's a good looking car, really like the way it is. Uh, color, I probably would have preferred something maybe a little different, but uh, being original paint, I'll take it. Plus, well, they're hard to come by in this area. You know, the West Coast might be a different story, but on the East Coast, all this stuff is rotted out to death. Got the hideaway headlights, mag wheels, moonroof. Fender flares, the visor or louvers over the back window, and it's got all the options on it. Four in 84 cars, fairly de decent. It's got cruise control, power steering, power brakes, AC, rear wiper, rear defrost, power windows, uh, power mirrors, kind of, five speed, which I like, over an automatic, and it's got a nice bulletproof engine. Again, it's got some boo boos on it. Tail lights whacked on the right hand side there. Somebody put some red tape over it. Did a crappy job of gluing it. The exhaust, I don't know what they got on there for a muffler, but it kind of rattles and uh, again, a little on the noisy side for me for a four cylinder car. All right guys, with that, let's go back to the shop and uh, bring her up on the lift, go see what the underside looks like. Any issues under there, we'll start doing some wrenching. Hopefully, see if we can get some of this stuff accomplished. Hey, we got her up in the air. Let's go take a look underneath and see what we got. And I was confirming with a friend of mine 
the backstory on it, and they did drive it out from California. So it's originally a California car. I believe it's been here about five years now on the East Coast. Another thing about a GTS and a Supra, I got some moisture going on there, is it's got independent rear suspension. You should be a live axle in the rear. Now you see it's got CV joints with the pumpkin in the middle. Yeah, they come with independent rear suspension on the GTS and the Supra. Here's that aftermarket muffler that's on there. It's rattling away, probably on that tin right there. And yeah, the body looks good all the way around. I really don't want to repaint it because as cars get older, if they have original paint on them, they are worth more than ones that have been repainted. Looks like we got a bunch of oil dripping down. Looks like we're missing a clamp right there. That can make for a rattle. We'll possibly break it. We gotta go find out what that oil leak is. Looks like it's all over the place. It's free undercoating, right? Yeah, the rest of it looks pretty decent though, huh? I don't see hits anywhere. Yeah, definitely really clean. All right, let's go bring her down. We'll pop open the hood and take a peek inside there. See if we see what that oil is coming from. It looks pretty much as good under here as it did under the car. No rust and shock towers. Tops of the fenders. Hood looks decent. Got a little bit going on the lip right there. Let's see if we can find that oil leak. It is a 22RE. A 22R, I believe, is carbureted, and RE, I believe, is the fuel injection. Let's see. Hopefully it's not a head gasket. That would suck. <laughs> That's why it was cheap. See a vacuum line off. I'm sure if that goes to anything. It looks like kind of running down the back. I'm going to say it's the valve cover gasket. I don't know if you guys can see it better than I can. Yeah, it looks like it's, it's wet even up this location right here. I see, I see it on the manifold right here. So the gasket generally is not going to push it upwards. It's going to have to run down. If there's an oil pressure switch, that can probably do it too. So it uh, has a mechanical adjusted valve. So we might as well take the valve cover off and get a new gasket for it. We'll go through adjusting the valves. And go on from there. So, valve cover gasket. I want to grab a muffler. I should probably grab an oil filter. Tune up parts. I'll wait on. We may go chase some of that later, though. All right, I'm gonna go do a little bit of shopping, and we'll get into it. Gotta find out if that's a hot or a cold setting too on the valves. These are a tapered washer, uh, not a washer, but a, a bushing, a seal. I'm trying not to tear them up. And you can see that's the angle that they're on. Clean. Like it's had the oil change fairly decent in its lifetime. My guess is the oil leak is these guys right here. They kind of shrink up over time. Get brittle. So I'm hoping for anyway. All right, let's go adjust the valves. All right, so I'm getting ready to adjust the valves. Get the valve cover out of the way. They are adjusted hot. It's eight and twelve thou. The 
valves are kind of easy to see where the engine is because you can actually see where the lobes are on this one. It's an overhead cam, so you're able to directly see what you're doing. Uh, you could put a ratchet on it and ratchet the engine over so that the lobes are facing down. Essentially what you want to do on each cylinder, the lobes are offset, something like that. You want both of them in the down position along, eh, roughly along those lines that the lobes are not interfering. Now, as I said, you can put a ratchet on it or you can kind of cheat. This is called a remote start and all it has is two wires coming out of it. One goes down to the starter. The starter has a heavy lead and a little fine wire lead. The heavy lead is the 12 volts supplying the starter with energy. The little lead is the signal coming from your ignition switch telling the starter when to turn over. So one of the ends go to that and the other end just goes to the 12 volts on the battery. Hence, you pull the button, cranks over, make sure it's in neutral, <laughs> else that's going to hurt. And I'm just going to go look at those lobes and I'm going to bump it around until I get these two lobes out of play. Get the hair more. Right about there. So both of those lobes are facing down. We can now adjust that cylinder and that cylinder. Let's go get a feeler gauge, a wrench, and give them a tweak. Let's go see what we got in that first cylinder. It's kind of noisy, so I would suspect that it's got some issues. The intake is the eight. Actually, that one feels pretty good. And the 12 on the other one actually feels pretty good too. Not saying that uh, we're not gonna find one, but those seem to be okay. So I'm gonna go to the next cylinder, go bump it again around. You don't have to do what I'm doing. A lot of times, if you, you can, there's like certain valves you can adjust. You can put it in one position. You can get like these two valves, one valve here, one valve there. I'd rather just look at it though and make sure I got the lobes in the right position on each one that I'm trying to do. And intake. She looks good on that one. That one's loose. The, uh, other thing that you can do, which helps if you don't have access to get a, say a wrench on the front of the pulley and the car is a standard, you get the plugs out of it. You can take it and put the car in like second or third gear, leave the emergency brake off and you can actually roll, push the car forward and back a little bit and it'll bump the engine over. Again, make sure that, well, it'll have no plugs in it so it won't run. But the no plugs is so it's, you're not fighting compression. Just gonna roll up on that one. You get a nice drag. Difference between hot and cold adjustment, usually about a thou. It depends on the engine. Like if this engine was cold, I'd probably go a little tighter. That one feels like it could probably still go for a little more. A lot of times too, when you you feel like it's okay and you tighten the, you tighten the jam nut down, the, the measurement changes. So, yeah, that feels pretty good now. It's got some drag. All right, I'm gonna do the last two cylinders. If I find one that's way out, I'll bring you back. Yeah, cylinder number three, super loose on that one. There's no drag at all. And the same thing on the intake. Both of these are really loose. Yep, the further back I went, the worse it is. That one's super loose. That one's okay. That exhaust valve is, is super loose. That's probably where a bunch of the, the clackling noise was coming from. All done. Took longer to take the valve cover off than it took to adjust the valves. Yeah, so as it was good in the front, progressively worse as it went to the rear. I don't know if that correlates to anything. Maybe the last guy to adjust them was short. <laughs> Just couldn't do the back ones. So that's all set. The issue is not so much with the valves being loose. That just kind of makes for a noisy drivetrain. The problem is if they go tight, the other way wants to go burn a valve. There's not enough. If it gets too tight where there's no gap, the valve doesn't close all the way. And then the escaping gas, uh, mostly around the exhaust valve, is gets hotter and hotter. And it, that, that gas flowing by the edge of the valve will overheat the valve and burn the corner of the valve away a little bit. And that's the old saying we hear you, you bur burnt a valve. Well, that's what it is. All right, let's go get that valve cover gasket swapped over, get that changed, and we can put all that back on. Yeah, see so if we can stick.
to add that out of there. It's probably the original one. Yeah, it's kind of stiff. And these are, I, I think, are the uh, the culprits for the most part. And our new one. Nice, even give you the grommets for the top of the valve cover. The two half moons will get set in the crankshaft. Let's make sure we have no rolls in this. We got to make sure that. Come on. There you go. Just wiggle that around. Perfect. Yeah, it's much prouder too. You can see how much higher it's sitting than the other gasket. Probably is about an eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch from the surface. And the two half moons, I'm just going to go push right down on the cylinder head, block them off. I could bother putting a uh, sealer on them. I may live to regret that. <laughs> we'll see. Got all back together, few battle just to turn the key on. Now it won't start because they have that wire disconnected, but we should be able to just hit the remote and have it fire it up. Let's go give her a listen. Then there's that. <laughs> there you go. A little better, not quite as clanky. They gotta get put somewhere, that's not how they're supposed to be. Let's go with that. Belts look decent. I don't think the AC works. Alright. What do you want to work on next? Let's go finish up. Let's go finish up engine stuff. Kind of give her a once over, just check the fluids. I got a new oil and filter, we'll throw that on there. That'll take care of that, take the air cleaner, just the, all the basics, normal stuff. Then we'll get into uh, maybe poking underneath and see what we can do about that, that muffler system that's on there. Let's see if we can get ourselves a little urine sample here. And we are looking for how many balls float? <laughs> That'll be your protection. It tells you right down there, one to four. Uh, I think all but one was 40 below. So that's more than fine. Color looks fairly decent in it. It's not like it's nasty. So I'm not gonna bother changing that. So that happens if you buy higher grade stuff. Pop the air cleaner off, there's not even a mouse nest in it. Kind of unusual for everything I drag in here. So I think I talked about the fact that once in a while the battery will be stone dead on it and other times it'll, it'll stay just fine. So it's just a regular test light. You go negative, positive, positive, negative to light a light up. Doesn't matter which polarity you do, doesn't care. I'm gonna look for a drain on the system. And one way you can go about doing that, take either terminal off, it does not matter. And if you go from the terminal to the one that you took off, it lights up, see how that light is coming on? And it kind of goes dim. More than likely that is just going to be for radio, the memory of the radio, but it'll get brighter. The brighter it is, the more of a draw it has. Let me uh, open the, the door so the interior lights come on, see if that light will stay. See how it got brighter? That's just showing you how much of a draw is on it. So if the key's off and the interior lights are off, radio is disconnected and you have a light that's on there, generally that's something running the battery down. It's staying on when the car is not running. And a good way to try to determine what 
circuit is causing that is pull one fuse out at a time wait for the light to go out and whatever circuit that fuse is on will more than likely tell you what is going on unfortunately this one's intermittent it seems like it doesn't it doesn't do it so i don't think that's just a draw for the radio if it stayed that bright then i definitely know i, I would have something on sometimes a like with it being intermittent it would be like a relay that sticks when you shut the car off the relay doesn't turn all the way off and again we still have a problem with the headlights on this is it related i don't know but as of right now it's not doing it and just to follow up on that it will run the battery down eventually like if you leave a car for a month and it's got a, a radio that's especially the older ones where they draw a little bit more for the memory will run the battery down a lot of people put battery disconnects on it a lot of new cars can't even do that because it holds the memory for the computer <laughs> you go power it back up later on if it's been sitting in the computer needing to get reflashed that's why i like old stuff i know the ac doesn't work but i want to go see if i can push on the schrader valve and see if we have any kind of pressure in there Let's see if you hear any hiss or you know if it dumped all the, the fluid then we know it's going to leak in the system I don't think we have any. I don't have any gauges to hook up to it. But it may have ruptured like the condenser or something. If it had a hiss to it, I would just probably just try dumping a can in it. A Freon. I think it's going to need a little bit more love than that. Yeah, we're not getting anything. Nobody home. We could disconnect that starter wire. So this, the jumper that we put on it. I know the shadow is getting you. I'm just gonna replug that lead back in. That's the signal coming from the key. Get that right in there. Done. It's got a lube sticker under the hood that says 06, 70,000 miles. Hopefully, someone else has done something since then, or else it's got 20,000 miles. And sixteen years or so on it. Yeah. Definitely needed it. Should be 3.3. Hopefully it doesn't overrun my bowl. Now I just got to figure out where it goes. And we're out back. I'm going to go jump on that muffler so we get that swapped out. Unfortunately, they welded it on. My hope is that the other muffler can kind of come this way a little bit. Maybe we can cut it right here and sleeve it right over. Don't know what we got. Go get the other muffler and take a peek at it. See what we have to work with. So what are the chances? That the thrush hush will be quieter than what's already on it. Almost looks like the same thing, doesn't it? Yeah. I don't know what we're gonna do for I think the other one you can see right through. At least this one has you know, a bit of a baffle going around through it. Yeah, so you still have a direction to it. It's physically, actually, would we want to go something like that, right? So if we get that on there, we'd have to go in about that far. And I think if we cut the old tailpipes off, we we butt well and we get the set up. I wonder if we slice this right off and we just butt weld it to the edge of it instead of trying to sleeve over it. Again, I'm not sure what the diameter is like. I'm gonna go check this one too. Let's go get a caliper. There's the diameter of that and the diameter of that, see if it'll fit. Okay, right, so this one, I don't care what the number is, we're just gonna use that as like a measuring tool. that wide and that hopefully can drop into that one uh, yep 
Good. Let's get to hacking. Slice that. Probably would have. I guess a size I'd probably be best getting in there. Off with its head. Let's see if we can not punch through the gas tank. Come on, get started. on it. There we go. Trying to get unhooked. The hook goes around so far, I can't get the bend out of it. I'm going to bolt it there. I think we're going to have to use that over anyway because the other muffler doesn't have one. So I'll have to cut that hook off and, and weld that on there or make a new one. Let's see if we just shove that muffler on there. I wonder if we should fire it up and just see if it makes any kind of sound difference. All right, you were there with me. It showed that it fit. <laughs> oh, well. I got what's called a, uh, that's the right one, right? Yeah. I got a pipe expander. We can shove it in here and try to open it up. I'm going to take a some kind of flapper disc or something will clean up this outer edge so it doesn't have the debris on it. And somewhere over here, First shot, that's what these things are, little pipe expanders. You put them in the center of it and you uh, crank down. This draws into the middle and these open up. And there's also a cone. The cone's just for the very edge if it gets deformed. You hammer them in and it kind of makes the surface round again. Let's see if one of these will work for us though. All right. Let's take it right about there. Hopefully it's enough room and it'll hit you in the gut. Let's see if we can get a little expansion. You can even see right now it's like it's making it like an octagon. So I'm gonna back it off. Try to rotate it a little bit. Try to put those sections now in there. Yeah, come on. I'll try to push on those areas. So it looks around. See if it did anything. I don't want to overdo it. Probably wouldn't hurt while we still got it here. Let's go take that cone one. We'll ream it in there just to get rid of that, again, that, that eight-sided look to it. Runner home. Let's see if he'll, see if she'll receive. Uh, yeah, we're over it anyway. I think, uh, Couple of whacks with a hammer. We'll be able to get us. I don't know if we're going to throw a clamp on that. If you want to try welding it, we got to do something about this heat shield too. That heat shield's right against it. I don't know if we could just manhandle it away, the gas tank a little bit. Right there, Tim. Yeah, that's right where it was rattling on before too. Or can we suck this pipe? Can we bend that hanger? Let's try to get like a two by four or something. We'll try to wedge in here and see if we can give her a little bit of push away. I'd rather get a little bit more air gap from the gas tank. 
All right, right now, we'll measure it. We got, I'd call that an inch from it. Let's see if we can influence that hanger. There we go, it's right out of the manifold. I felt like it did something, huh? <laughs> but I went a little too far. It's about three. Yeah, I definitely think, I was thinking we're gonna get some spring back on it. I think we gotta find a fine line. Does that do it? That's got it perfect right there. He's about three eighths of an inch gap from the heat shield. Good. Quickly run that home a bit. Think it'll fall off? Good enough to run it for two minutes. And yes, I did put oil on it. Not much different. Different sound. I actually kind of like it better. It's still loud though. Yeah, I'll go with that. Mike, we have a choice, right? I already cut it off. All right. So let's go and cut the tailpipe off the other muffler. We'll assemble that before we put it under the car. Right, give that a hack. Guess we should probably go off the well towards the muffler more. the original pipe, huh? Okay, so on this one, I'll show you with the camera. You can see right through the muffler. That one you can see right through. There's not much of a baffle doing anything on that, but the other one, it has a couple of chambers that it does go through, so it does give it a different sound. And you can see inside this one, it's got more of a chamber going to it. No light, you can't see through it. I'm gonna butt weld them together. Yeah, because they're the same size. I might drop over it. Yeah, it's got that inner ring though. What if we could punch it now? They welded to that. Back to butt welding. We've got to get that galvy coating off of there. I'm not gonna be able to weld to that stuff. Let's go clean up that edge. Just kind of square it up too. Does it look straight? Hope so. Get a tack on it anyway. Speak now or forever hold your peace. I think we're okay. That's ugly. Who globbed that on there? Turn her down a little bit, a little bit too, too much.
We can't forget about that hook that has to get welded on there for the support. So let's go clean some of this up while it's out too. Well, I got the welding card out and it has the plasma cutter on, so I might as well play with another toy. I'd like to see if we can go possibly cut right through here, not kill the muffler or the bracket. Let's see how we make out. Watch your eyes. She's a little warm. Watch out for the hot spots. Go see how that does for us. Probably should hit it with a rubber mallet, but. That looks pretty good. I still think we're gonna weld it. Yeah, we could bend it on the angle we want. We'll look at the tailpipe, see how they exit the car, and maybe we'll put that hanger on there. Move where we want, and we'll maybe we just put a couple tacks on. We won't weld it solid in case they don't like it. What do you think? Go a little bit more that way. I don't want to get too close. It's a plastic bumper, you know, so I don't want the heat cooking this. I want to leave a fairly good air gap. I think before that was kind of crushed up a little bit more, but it, it was, you know, exiting out here. Should be okay. Unfortunately, it's a white bumper, so it's going to show, right? Yeah. I'll try tweaking it a little counterclockwise. And we should be able to get our bracket tacked on right there. And then I can weld the front. Plan, we got one. Yeah, weld it on. Let's go give her a. That feels pretty good. We'll find out when we go for a drive. I'm getting rattled to it. Better than it was, though. Right, let's keep picking away at little issues, and one of them. In fact, there's nothing holding the battery in place. I went and I grabbed one of the universal pull down brackets and then one rod. It has a rod that runs down to the bottom of the battery tray, grabs it, and then it's supposed to attach to that. We may have to, I don't know, maybe weld something on there. We'll see. Let's get this stuff out of the package. See what we can do. Yeah, see how this looks. So that runs down. And it's supposed to have one on each side. That's how these are normally used. They have a, a bar that, like I said, runs down to the bottom of the battery tray. There's a hole down in there. It grabs onto. And then that would lock onto. You're waiting for me to short across the battery, aren't you? <laughs> that locks on there. To there. And now we need to get to that bolt. I hope we can just maybe flatten that out and weld it to it. Probably our best bet, huh? Yeah, let's go try that. See if we can melt some holes in this. This falls right off.
Good enough. Rock size. Seven sixteenths on one side, ten millimeter on the other. That won't fall out at least. A little off the top, please. The next thing we should jump on is the fact that it has no high beams. It has low beams and high beams when you pull like the indicator towards you, you know, you, you're flashing somebody that they have the highs on or warning somebody a cop's coming. <laughs> uh, so I don't expect the bulbs they're working high and low. I don't believe they are a different circuit. Uh, let's see, what we, we'll start looking at the obvious first, which is gonna be probably like the fuse box, what we got, we got listed. Head like left and right. Well, that's gonna be just for a left and a right. We have both of one thing out, not a left or a right. Let's go pop. Wasn't even latched down. The cover's off. Should probably probe maybe a little bit. Actually, what's that? That's kind of cooked, huh? Yeah. Was that the, what did that say? Fusible links? Yeah. That, was that circuit it doesn't say what it is, though. Let's go get a meter and see if power is still going across that or if that's an open circuit. That would do it, huh? Let's see if we get anything. Check our light first. Make sure that's working. Always test your equipment. It'll screw with you. All right. It may not have anything. Oh, it does. I'm saying with the key off. All right, so that still has power going across. That's not it. This thing also had a big uh, whooping stereo in it. So it's a possibility that uh, that may be the issue. I wonder if we can, uh, just whatever ones have power, I'm just gonna go see if there's any opens. Some fuses will have power, some won't. Yeah, let's go turn the key on, turn the headlights on, and uh, see if we can poke around a little bit. Well, I actually had it wrong, there's no low beams. These are those headlight circuits, right? Where'd that cover go? So that's why the high beams work. So left and right can be those two over there. But it could have two blown low beam headlights. That would make things simpler. Uh, that's why when you hit it to the high beam switch, it still has high beams. <laughs> Let's, uh, can I get to the back of a bulb of one? Let's see how this stuff is kind of hidden in here. We, even if we just get the plug, let's go shut the headlights off and go back down. Let's see if we can get the plug off and then we'll see if we have power on uh, two of the different probes. All right, can we see the back now? Yeah, that was easy. Right. <laughs> the problem is that's gonna do the rotation when we uh, turn the headlights back on. Let's go see. Yeah, we can get to it, that's good. All right, let me get you uh, out of my hands in a stand and let's go probe that. And we gotta flick it over to low beams and see if we got power on one of those. All right, we're in low beams. And it's got power. But we're gonna have power on all three. <laughs> I am on negative of the plug. So did that mean the ground went away, right? Can't have power on all three. That doesn't make any sense. Hmm. Is it feeding back through the other headlight? All right, let's go figure out. I'm gonna go put the high beams on. We'll, we'll do process of elimination. We'll figure out which ones are what just by. All right, that's high beams.
So that top one's dead. And that one. So that is that ground? Uh so the next best thing we can go do, I'm gonna go shut the headlights back down again because I'm a little perplexed. Sometimes it, they're pigtail together, so what it does is the bulb on the other side, it goes through the element and will back feed to, to the side and kind of screw you. I'm going to go flip the headlights down. I'm going to go probe the headlight bulb itself and see if we have an open. We got a brand new high beam, low beam. It's not the right shape, but let's just plug that in and see what we get. I have a feeling we have other issues though. Come on. Find the hole. Been a while. Come on. Get in there. Yeah, nothing. So it's not the headlight. Headlights. Let's go keep probing. See what we can find. There's gotta be another fuse box, I would think, too. I think we started chasing relays. It's saying that that one should be uh, that one. I am gonna go pop the Headlights on, low beams, kind of give them a couple of whacks, and then I don't have anything to replace this with. Unfortunately, parts stores are closed right now. We could possibly open it up, just kind of fire it with our fingers. But I would figure one circuit is going to be coming from the switch, telling it this to latch, and then making a pass going on the other ones. Possibly just jump it out too and check it. If not, we're going to go under the dash. I think there's another fuse box under there. So I put it on so the high beams are on and they're off right now. And I plug it back in, the headlights come on and the relay feels click, so it's not this. Hang down the wheel well. Looks like somebody has definitely been here before us, huh? Come on. That just swing open or come off. That's just floating. That doesn't make any sense, huh? That's not a hinge. So where is it hiding? You know, plus out the fact that that wire is cooked definitely has me kind of speculating that. Oh, well, there it all is. That something is awry. Let's see if we see anything that says fuse for headlights. I could probe that one. Radio. What is that? Well, it's head RTR. There's a joke there somewhere. I think of that little 7 amp. And I'm sure that at some point, if we don't find it here, possibly it's going to be up by the uh, headlight, the uh, switch itself in a column. I'm hoping it's not that, but we'll see. All right, we need to go find that one. That's supposed to be flipped up there. Not exactly a bunch of room to work in. Let's say we make a little bit of elbow room. Let's see if we can get this out of our way. Cut on. It wraps around the hood release cable. You see anything better? And I did screw up. How did you screw up, you ask? I did not have. It's the original diagnosis. I have high beam and low beam. It is just no high beam in its normal resting place. You, you click it towards you, it does have the high beam come on. How I screwed that up, I'm not sure. But onward, right? So we gotta figure out what is happening and which fuse it is. So which one was it again? Yeah, I figured out the orientation of the panel first, right? Sometimes they give you like the mirror image. Sometimes you hold it like this, it's the actual. So I gotta go figure out where there's a 20 amp fuse and a seven and a half. I can get my orientation from there as long as somebody doesn't screw it up the fuses. So that is going to be, you guys got a much better view than me. It looks nothing like that. <laughs> How does this have two fuses going across? And that has like four. I don't know why. I'm a meathead. It's gotta be like that. Again, I can't see. 
lost my excuse. I'm sticking with it. I can't see. Okay. So what's that one right there? Tell me. I'm going to say it goes like that. And our headlight would be this one. Man, I can't get in there. Some, some of them come with like a little tool. You can grab them, pull them out. I am going to go get a pair of needle nose. Pop that fuse out and see if there's any issues with it. Let's go just go see if we can probe it. What was, it? was it that one? Power on that side. Power on that side. There's nothing wrong with that fuse. That is not our issue. Ah, I am to the point where we either a relay or the high beam low beam switch. And also that steering wheel is out of whack too, so I wonder if somebody was in there ahead of us, kind of probing some stuff around. And didn't fix it, kind of like the gas gauge scenario. What is all that? That looks like somebody's stereo installation maybe. And then it goes into the regular harness. Doesn't look like Toyota though, does it? It's got Toyota markings on it. So I probed the fuse, it's got power on both sides, it's not the fuse. I do see loose hardware. This thing fell out. And we got a bunch of relays and stuff and wires and crap kind of looks like haphazardly flopped around inside there. I definitely think we are chasing somebody else's attempts at fixing stuff. So let's go get this cover drop down, see if we have a little bit better access to what's going on. Yeah, more spaghetti. I don't think that's from the factory. I don't think I have it hooked up to again. It was, there's big wires in the back for something like an amp or something that was in here and they ripped it out. I am looking for some type of relay or something that runs the headlight or controller. I guess it's going to look something like this. That might even be it right there. I don't think the own, this has an owner's manual. I'm going to go check and see if there's anything in there. Sometimes the older cars are a little bit better with telling you what's going on. Well, tore apart this side, poked and hoped. Went over to the other side, there's another couple of relays and whatnot on that side. Poked and hoped. The problem is I do not have a book on this car. And I did a quick online and I was not able to find anything really kind of zeroing in so far on it. So I may have to go back to this. The only thing I found was a old uh, Forerunner book. I was trying to go poke through that, see if it can give me some idea where the locations of the, uh, you know, the breakers and everything is wired. No good, it's uh, too far away from this vehicle. If I had like a Corolla or something, I'm sure it would probably be fairly close to the same setup. But I have a feeling it's probably gonna be right in the stem, just the contacts are not making it, you know, for the high beam part of the switch. But I think we're going to jump past that. Probably gotta order a book on it and see, you know, we still got other stuff to go chase. The gas gauge isn't working. I have a low beam, I have high beam. High beam, you just have to hold in the up position. Again, it's better than not having uh, the other way around. So we're gonna go leave that be for now. And uh, probably gonna run into the same thing for the next item that we're gonna jump on, which is see what we can do with getting these mirrors. They just kind of are, are floating around. They don't stay put, they just, you know, very hard to work with as far as uh, trying to see down the road. Again, I try wedging a piece of uh, plastic inside here, but as soon as you shut the door, the mirrors move on you. So let's go see if we can go pop one of those apart and if there's anything we could service on the inside of them. Yeah, it looks like somebody's already been jumped over to the passenger side because this is floating. Yeah, it's broke off. So we got a screw there. Controller for it. Dude, those two screws. Even oh, there's another one up there. Even if we can go get it, just so that it has a lot of drag on it to stay put, you know, wherever you can kind of set them by hand, I'll be happy with that. But again, it, they just flop it around too much. And let's go see what we can see. It looks like somebody's already. What is that right there? 
Let's see if I goobered some paper or something in there to stop it the first time. What that is. I don't know if we could pop the glass off the like a, a socket and get it out of the way. It's like it's got a little electric motor right there, right? And another one. See a big spring or something? Oh, looks like a spring, doesn't it? Well, possibly can break the mirror, but I have a feeling we might be able to just kind of pull on it, and it's got like one of those those nubs in the center. Let's go find out. Kind of good that we're starting with the passenger mirror. <laughs> Will it come out? There it goes. Good. Yeah, somebody went and put all that crap in there to tighten it up. So what is these little pads must push, like they must come out and steer the mirror. There's this side. Did they break off or Right? It would just kind of like push on those two things, wouldn't it? So, I wonder if those are... Make sure you're in frame. Let's... I don't know if it's the mirror or not. Probably two we can... Well, how many wires you got coming out of that? Just three or six? Three. We could probably probe that too. Just like turn the switch where it wants to see if... We're getting power to it. I'm surprised we can't get these to, I guess maybe they're threaded, will they turn? Yeah, if we turn them, they get longer. Never had one of these apart. So if we pop that back in, <laughs> we could adjust it manually one time. <laughs> I wonder, like, too, like, if it's running, because there's not much drag on that at all. If um, they just kind of vibrate and, and work their way all the way in, that'd be a pain in the ass, though, huh? Trying to set it up. If we have to, we will. All right, let's uh, screw it around. Let's go get a test light and see if we got any power going to the mirror. See if there's a problem with the mirror or a problem with the car. I right, got the key on. Let's just go grab one of them. And we'll do like a, there it goes. So definitely, I'm, I'm trying to rotate the mirror in the center and it's getting a signal on the light. Let's go see. I figure one of them to ground though, right? Yeah. So that's one. Another. Watch the third one do it to me too, right? Yeah, so that's, nope. <laughs> I wonder if it has to switch back and forth though. I wonder if, right? So it's a motor, you gotta go forward and back. So you're gonna need the each post to go from positive to negative. And we know we got power coming to each one of those, but then it has to switch over to being ground. It has to switch the other direction for the electric motor to go back the other way, right? So let's uh, put the test light, this end of the test light on 12 volts on the battery. And we'll try it again and we see if we get grounds going to those three. All right, so now my test light is hooked to 12 volts on the other end. So any touch part of the body that I touch will let me know if I have ground going to it or not. So let's go do the same thing. Can you see the plug? And let's see if anything lights up now. All right, there we go. So that's what it is. It's switching back and forth between hot and ground. I don't want to jump across these. I'm going to arc them out. Yeah. So that's the scenario. They seem like they're working. Seems like all the issues are in the mirrors themselves. Yep. Each one has the capacity to jump back, jump back and forth between positive and negative to run those little electric motors. Let's go look back at that mirror again. See if we can do anything with those. See if they're stuck and we can get them to move. I don't know. So before I go crazy, I am just gonna go plug it back in and with the mirror off of there, we'll just kind of confirm that these aren't doing anything. Right, let's see if they do anything. Oh, that one's working. Okay. 
All right, they didn't do that before. I know for a fact. I'm gonna go switch over to the other side. <laughs> How come they're both working now? Neither one did anything before. I don't know if we just disturbed something in the wiring when we're screwing with the other stuff. Let me go pop that glass back on there and see if it will come back to life. I almost started yanking those little motors apart. That's weird, huh? Wouldn't it have to have... You would think there'd be like a spring that... goes so that point and that point. You would think that there would be like a spring opposite or, or something pushing against it. Gravity. Did something go on that little tit that broke off? Hmm. See, big spring, the big spring, I think, is if the mirror itself gets hit and, you know, pushed on the car, it springs it back. I don't see anything else missing, do you? Let's go without that piece of paper in there. So it was like that, right? Try huh. break it. <laughs> uh, see how floppy that is? Something's not right. We're, we're missing something. I'm gonna get cocky. Break it. I wonder if we could put something around that to tighten the socket up. Let's go. Something's got to hold the mirror better than that. Well, we should pop the glass out of the other side, see if we see if there's like something laying in it. Like somebody was definitely in this one. We saw the, the paper that was in it, right? Yeah, let me go try to pop the glass out of the, the driver's side and see if we see, see what we see, see? Damage this one. Come on. Oh my god. <laughs> Look at that crap. That's, this one's got stuff stuffed in it everywhere. Yeah. I don't see anything different though, do you? I think it's just the same scenario as far as the sloppiness of it. I think we could probably get something around the socket. I wonder if that's all it was. Like this was supposed to have so much tension on it. But what would, like, so you, you run both sound noise out, right? Both motors, and you tilt it up like that. So for it to come back, what would pull, what would pull the mirror back towards these two posts? Like there should be something, in my opinion, linked from here to here. The, the hold it against those two, the, those two pieces because even if the socket was tight right if the mirror was run all the way up both motors out and then you backed off what's going to draw it back towards it i wonder if we could just like add a spring i don't know how we're going to get it on there though or i wonder if like a spring if we just put a spring up in this corner to give them something to fight against. I'm not sure. I'm going to think about that a little bit. That's probably our best bet, right? Let's go make sure these are moving. Okay. So that one's not changing. It's not changing its height. It's just staying there. A piece of plastic just broke off of it too. Yeah, you think they're like supposed to, the outside supposed to be glued to it? Come on, come on. What are we doing? There you go. That's that one. Yeah. So they they go round and round, but they're not doing it on this one. Let's go work with the passenger mirror and see if we can do, like those seem like those two things were working, right? Maybe we could put like a spring up in this corner. We'll try to get the passenger mirror back together and we'll just kind of screw with this one. 
Yeah, I'm looking back at that other one. I have a feeling that's the scenario that this, both of these had like little tits that popped off of it and locked into each one of those. And that's what made it to pull and push. I don't know if we can rebuild that or maybe we should just move forward with what I was saying and try to mount. Yeah, so is that like, can we lift that right out of there? Shouldn't that be part of the, it's probably, this is probably a miniature version of, of something like this. Yeah, you can see there's a little bit of a nub there. So can we get, if they still push out, can we do like I said, can I glue a light spring in this corner to have something for them to push against? Won't hurt to try, right? Yeah, so I unthreaded one of those out of there. And I think what's supposed to happen is these are not supposed to rotate. So that the one that's on the driver's side that was just sitting there, I wonder if we hold them with our fingers and they'll, they'll run in and out. But the fact that instead of them turning on the threads, the whole thing is turning is allowing it just to stay where they are. So we would have to also kind of come up with something to keep these from turning or else they're just going to sit still. I, I, I spun them out with my fingers, right? How would you get it together too is the other part of it. I can see you popping the frame of the mirror on there, right? So that's what one looks like. Was that all one piece? A pain in the ass. I'd rather just have mirrors you can just grab with your fingers. <laughs> Again, it's it's 30 years old. Shouldn't be complaining. I don't know if the threads are on the inside or the outside. I see something on the outside. So would you be able to push them in? Let's go see. Like how would you assemble it? And now uh, I would have to rotate. Odd, huh? Hmm. Unless they, again, like they just had like little knuckles like that. They just, it, it popped onto them. Well, I say we got nothing to lose. I think we should try mounting a spring. Maybe around that screw and get it in there. Cut it down some to probably about half of it. And that'll give some push against these two. And hopefully there's enough push against these. Maybe we'll all dribble some like light oil or something inside these so that the outside, if it's got pressure against them, maybe they won't spin and they'll kind of work correctly. Yeah, I think it's going to be our best bet. If not, we're going to need whatever these guys are and how they attached to there or whatever stopped them from turning. You would think that all they would do is like cut a, a, a slot in them and then have like a, a slot on these that they would just pop them on. They won't turn. Yeah. Yeah. We'll put that on there somehow and see if we can make it work. It's like the thing behind your door. How short you think? It, it's not a very, it's pretty light. I don't know. We'll rather cut a little too long than too short. Let's go with that much. Let's see if it'll work for us. Are they in far enough? <laughs> well, that, that's where it's supposed to be against the spring. Uh, it, should, it should push it like that far. I probably should have left it maybe full. That's no good. We gotta come up with something a little, a little more beefy than that. Something a little bit more zest. I probably should again left it long because you know what I was thinking. The outside edge was where it stopped. You know, I was thinking the mirror kind of stopped there, but really you rock the mirror comes all the way out to there. So let's go find something a little bit more beefy. All right, pick one. I'm thinking 
So the original one is this. You can see the thinness of the wire. Let's try a full length of that and see how it does for us. Kind of snuck it around the corner there. Get out of there. I need to get that up under there. You know I'm going to stick it under my nail. Alright, that should do it. Can we get it to lean? Let's just see what happens with that. Punches right through the glass. <laughs> I bet there's not like a... I can get like a, in a cavity. I wonder if we can get it... So the post is there. We are coming roughly in this area, right? Try to direct it so like that pocket will hold it. You know, it doesn't want to slip behind it and go sideways. There you go. So the that spring we have to get. I gotta back you up a little. Hold on. So that spring, we have to get it to go up in that upper corner. See so if we can get like a flap blade. Yeah, we can get it to sit maybe right here. It's, it's already better. Actually, I wonder if we run those two cylinders out. Will that do it? I feel like it's got a, like a lot of room to move though. Like that mirror needs to be that far. I feel like those things would fall right out. That one. That one break right off. That sucks. Yeah, I think that one just got so brittle. Yeah, look at it. it's shattering, it's just falling apart. <sighs> we were so close. We got one. I would have to try to come up with something that looks like that, right? Yeah, this one just turned to dust. Nothing left of it. There's all little pieces of it. So these things are like, almost like a wax. There's not much to them, you know? I think what they did was they put the, when they put the glass on and they just started both motors and they ran it in and it kind of cut its own threads is my guess. But what I found, I found a bolt that are thread into it. Again, I have a feeling what's gonna happen is this thing just sits in the motor and this is not supposed to spin, but I have a feeling what's going to, even if I cut it and it's got some pressure against these little pads, I still think they're going to kind of, instead of the, the bolt getting longer and shorter, I think it's just going to go spin. How we can go about getting all that together, I don't know. I'm going to go cut this one. I'm going to go cut that part of it off, thread it in, and then just kind of hook it up. Worst case. I'm just gonna go take them and, I'll, and I'll, I'll turn what I have here and I'll dial it in so the mirror's in the right loca location and doesn't move around. I ain't letting anybody drive my car anyway. So <laughs> the mirrors will be set up for me and they'll at least work. They won't be flopping around like crazy. So let's give it a shot. Guess we'll give it a fighting chance. We'll put a little bit of lube on the thread part of it, you know, so that it doesn't, that's still hot. Which one's more important? Up and down? Or left and right? Stop it. Right, that's gonna be our one. Run that down almost all the way. We'll leave that one about halfway out. See a scene? Third time's the charm. The mirror's not gonna be white anymore by the time I'm done. Alright. There we go. 
Yeah, that one looks good. If we gotta go, if that motor will run out for us, I probably should have set that one a little bit more. Find out. Hopefully that's enough pressure against it where it'll allow it to do its thing. I think what happens though, when it runs all the way in, then it's kind of screwed, so. Yeah, let's see if it does anything. Make a noise. Yeah, I think if it's just rotating around, that's the problem. That way it works. That's this way. it onto the floor by accident. Alright. So you know this one. Yeah, I just need to run that one out forever. Probably should make a bolt for each one of them, huh? Yeah, drove in but not out. Yeah. That way works. The me the metal part, the metal one I put in works. Yeah, just the other one tilting doesn't. I don't know if I have any more of those though. The, the bolts. If I can get with the bolts, I'll change them all over to that. I guess that wax just has too much drag on it. All right, other than totally dirty on the outside from my paw prints all over the white paint, I got that one functioning. I actually put two bolts in that one, did the same as I showed you. I can't find any more, so that one works. It's a little iffy. You can tell like the bolt is like slipping a little bit, but it does catch the other one. The other bolt that I made, I cut it on an angle, so I had like a bit of a knife edge on the front of it instead of being flat. So it kind of wants to dig into the plastic of the mirror and then. You know the the posts go in and out so now that i know i'll go to the hardware store i'll try to grab you know three more of those and i'll cut them this one i got i just kind of fine tweaked it and it is in the right spot just by itself right now as long as i don't play with it and then we could just put this in a neutral spot for now and we have at least functioning mirrors that we can see out of i am going to go and button up all this plastic junk i tore down until I get a book or whatever I need to go find on the high beam, low beam scenario. And uh, I, I still think it's probably part of the switch. I and mean, I actually have a feeling this one maybe was, was in there. That's why that steering wheel is on an angle on us. See the battery charger on it too, having the lights on for so long. So it's all put back together, mirrors function. And I was gonna go for a test drive, but it's already dark out. So I figured maybe what I'll do is I got one of those uh, rug shampooers that you use for your house, you know, a little handheld attachment. Maybe I'll give the seats a shot see if it cleans them up and then it can dry over the evening and we'll pick it up tomorrow so let me go give that a shot and see how it works out i thought i had one with the little rotating heads on the thing spinning around this one's just spraying suck <laughs> give it a shot see what it does I'll go do that for a while and then we'll let it dry the next day and we'll have an idea whether it did anything at all. It doesn't look like it's lifting it, does it? I'll work it. Well, it must have done something because that's the dirt that came out of it. Yeah, I know, right? 
still wet and I can still see some like light staining in it, but definitely appears to be better than what it was. So I'm gonna go throw a fan right in the window or up in the sunroof. I'll leave the back open, let air kind of like flow through overnight and we'll pick it back up tomorrow morning. And it's the next morning. Had a fan blowing across the doors. Battery just connected so the light stayed out. And I say they look better. I still see some light staining on them. Second coat probably wouldn't hurt, especially on the left front of that seat and the bolster here on that for most of the heavy traffic is, you know. But not bad. Usually all these you look at, all the seats are all torn up, so they're holding up pretty good. Let me go shut that fan off and I'll show you something. Now all the modern cars have all kinds of stuff that the seats do, move, turn, shift around. But back in 1984, it was kind of a rare thing. And this one has a little air bladder. You pump up, and as you can see the center of the seat blow up, and you got little controls over here. You can let the air out of it, and you can manipulate how the back of the seat contours your back. It's super comfortable. You got a little headrest that rotate into different positions. They'll click, and you reset them. Plus they recline all the way back, which is nice. Yeah, you still see some getting through in there. Light colored seats, unfortunately. Well, I think we should go put the battery back in, throw the mats in it, and uh, go for a little putt. See how the exhaust sounds. All right, cold start. I know, it's loud still, but actually, in my opinion, it sounds better. My rear wiper is on. I gotta figure out what works that. <laughs> and one of these? Nope. That? Let's see if that stops it. Oh, you know what? I didn't take the chocks out of the wheel. My mirror went twang over the night. This is the one that still has the two pieces of wax in it instead of the other. The spring overcame the wax and pushed down on it. That one's still good. Again, I gotta get those bolts. Clank, clank. We'll head out on some open road. Sunroof's open. Eh. All right, let's go we'll give her a little run through the gears. That's definitely off. No way I'm doing 2200 RPM at 55 miles an hour in second gear. So I wonder if that's related to the uh, gas gauge. Yeah, exhaust is no quieter. Different sounding, but no quieter. All warped up. Got a bunch of stuff to chase, but I think it's gonna be it as far as mechanicals on this video. So we have AC not working, gas gauge doesn't work that tack. Seems like it idles okay, but when it revs up, it's, it's not even close. The high beam switch, the only thing I need for inspection, which is due at the end of the month, is get this high beam uh, set, up, set up fixed. I gotta go chase a book, a repair manual, and just some more troubleshooting on that. And Russell's just gotta clean up stuff. Get those two bolts for that mirror. I could do it right on the car. I don't need to go remove the mirror anymore. And uh, straighten the steering wheel out. Should have done that on this ride. Should have loosened it up more. Putting around and just pop it back on straight. But if I got to take it apart for this, I'll take care of it then. It's a nice car. Again, it's 38 years old, so I like you. Don't expect certain things to go wrong. I may or may not make another video on this. I'm not sure. Depend maybe how this one does. 
generally would get it to a certain level and then just like every half hour so you get like a half hour here and there a part comes in you take care of one item at a time instead of trying to knock out a whole video on one topic help if I turn the cruise control off <laughs> See if I get used to that muffler. May end up going for a stock one. I'm a real fan of the old Toyota stuff. I had a first gen, it was a 73 uh, ST, Celica ST. They had a GT and an ST, I think, back then. Smaller version, each generation seems like they get larger and larger. Kind of like people. <laughs> um, so, I'd like to really find one of those. They really rusted bad. That and a first gen 4Runner are still on my list. So I keep an eye out for those. And I'm trying to get stuff that's not a total rust bucket like this one. Again, being from California, it's not a total toilet. Welding quarter panels on, attaching fenders, and put frames underneath them and all. It's nice just to go I have to go pick away with little small issues like this. And I'll run this all summer. I'm running errands and I don't need my truck. I'm gonna plan on using this. I'm not gonna run in the winter. I'm not gonna, you know, kill it for uh, salt and everything, but nothing saying I can't run it. And have fun with it. All right. Right, guys with that I think we're gonna to the point where we're gonna go sign off I think I'm gonna go run to the diner and go get myself a little bit of lunch and then I gotta go put this video together <laughs> for Sunday I'm running late I'm usually more ahead of the time than this uh, just the way this week worked out for me so I will see you soon we'll do it again sometime and uh, let me know if you want to see more on this well actually I'll, I'll, I'll go by viewership if it's an underperformer then I'll just take care of the stuff on the side and we'll move on to something else I got some other ones to go finish up the go-kart Batman go kart we got to finish and uh, we'll jump on them if not this one does real well if people have an interest in it I'll get a bunch of parts for it and I'll do another whole video of knocking out some more issues that are on it but as far as this one's concerned guys thank you so much I appreciate it it's like it's gonna rain and uh, we'll see you soon later all right I had to fix the wheel and turn the idle down the idle was too high that might take a little bit of persuasion Is right about there. We'll put around the block and see if that's still straight. <laughs>